Hey, what's going on, everybody? Kevin Burke from TheHoopDoctors.com. We're here live at the Tanga Rays 200th anniversary special event here in New York City. David Lee of the New York Knicks is inside. Let's go inside. Let's chop it up with D. Lee. Let's see what's on his mind. Come on. I'm joined by none other than New York Knicks, David Lee, Power Forward, the Double Double Machine. Dave, how are you enjoying the evening so far? Having a good time. Nice. Now, I guess I could I introduce you as New York Knicks, David Lee. I guess I can only introduce you as that for another couple of weeks, right? What's your hopes for free agency? Where do you plan on playing next year? Well, I want to be here in New York. I mean, it's going to be uh, an interesting process starting in a couple of weeks. Uh, a lot of it's got to do with what LeBron and, and D. Wade and those guys decide to do. But, um, you know, this is kind of the business aspect of the NBA, and we're, uh, we're excited about uh, moving forward and seeing where I'm going to be next year. So you think that you're... Your fate ultimately resides with what LeBron and D-Wade and those guys are doing? Well, I think a lot of these teams, including the Knicks, uh, especially the Knicks, you know, have, have saved all this cap room and they're trying to make a run at guys like LeBron James, rightfully so, one of the best players in the league, if not the best. And uh, it's going to be a situation where, uh, you know, it kind of starts from the top. Once he decides what he's going to do, it's going to be sort of a trickle-down effect from there. And, and um, me and a bunch of the rest of the free agents kind of understand that. And so once he makes his decision, then uh, we'll go from there. As a Knicks fan, I personally hope you're back with the Knicks. Have you given any thought to actually remaining a member of the Knicks and playing with LeBron? What would that do for the team and organization, in your opinion? Well, I mean, it'd be a, it's the, the greatest city in the world to, to play in when you're winning. And uh, unfortunately, it's not a great city to be in when you're losing, as we found out the last couple of years. But it's um, it'd be great to be here in New York. I've loved my five years here. I hope to be here a lot longer. And um, adding a guy like that or, or any other major free agent to the mix, uh, adding another great player on the team uh, would be something that would make the fans that much more excited, and I think everybody in the organization. Congratulations on making your first All-Star appearance. It should have been your third All-Star appearance if, you, if it were up to me, but bring me through, talk me through about the experience of making your first All-Star team. Um, what was that experience like? Well, I think it was it was even that much more special because of where the game was held this year. Having to be in that enormous stadium with 118,000 people, biggest crowd to ever see a game. There was something, the atmosphere was really, really special. Even the, the guys on the team that have been in 10 or 12 All-Star games, guys like Kevin Garnett, were saying, like, man, this is you know, this is something we've never seen before. So it's a really cool experience just having a chance to interact with the rest of the guys on the squad. And um, and just hearing your name called as an All-Star is really, really special. Now, Dave, you played four years at Florida. Your fifth, you just finished your fifth year as a member of the Knicks. So you had a bunch of years as a collegian and as a pro. Now, a few years ago, your former coach, Billy Donovan, he accepted the Orlando Magic coaching job, then rescinded that went back to Florida. Now, we just saw Tom Izzo from Michigan State offer the, offer the Cleveland Cavaliers coaching job and ultimately went back to uh, Michigan State. In your estimation, why do so many college coaches have a tough time making that transition from the college game to the NBA, you played on the both levels for a couple of years. So, what's, what's your take on that? Well, I think I think the biggest part of it is sort of the unknown for those guys. Uh, I mean, you saw guys like Patino and Kyle Perry try it in the past and had some success, but also had some failure. And I think it's just because the two games are so different. You know, uh, I, I think the college game is a lot about the coaches, and the coaches get a lot of recognition. And uh, and and guys like you know, uh, Coach Izzo and Coach Donovan make a lot of money as it is in college. So, the money it's not like it's the difference between making 100 grand and 10 million. It's you know, sim more money, probably a little bit more in the pros, but, you know, it's a very different game. 82-game season rather than 30. A lot more goes into the season. It's a lot more of a marathon than it is a sprint. So, for those coaches, it's a big decision. And, and in the case of, in the case of uh, Coach Izzo and Coach Donovan, they have, you know, huge followings at their respective schools, and they both really enjoy the places where they're at. So, it's, it's a huge decision to leave and just kind of start over. Do you think Donovan would have been successful if he stayed on with the Orlando Magic? Oh, yeah, it's tough not to be with Dwight Howard there. He, he makes it tough to be not to, uh, to be unsuccessful. So uh, I know Coach is very happy to be where he is, though. I've asked him about it, and he just says he loves being a Gator, and he's really excited to stay in Portland. We don't care about Dwight Howard. You're the double-double machine in the league. <laughs> Dave, take me back a couple of years to the Isaiah Thomas days. What's different now The under the um, Donnie Walsh regime versus the Isaiah Thomas regime? Can you kind of kind of handicap the difference in uh, the organization, the feel of the organization? Well, I think, you know, sometimes Isaiah gets sort of a bad rap. I mean, he, I, I have to... I'll always be positive with him. He gave me my first, you know, he drafted me. He gave me the chance to get on the floor and play. Um, I think a lot of the a lot of the decisions that they've made uh, with, with players, you know, possibly didn't work out. But that happens with every team, and uh, every you know that that's the difference between an organization moving forward or kind of standing still. And there were some tough decisions that and some injuries and things like that that didn't work out that are impossible to plan for. Um, I think Coach Antonio brought in a new enthusiasm. He's done an unbelievable job, and uh, and now this summer uh, and moving forward with the, the sort of the new team. Um, I guess I'm really kind of the last remaining guy along with Eddie Curry that's still there from the previous. Resistance. 
cuisine. So they're going to have a chance, uh, whether I'm here or not, they'll have a chance to kind of create their new team, and uh, we'll see how they deal with it. But I think both guys did a, a great job in their own way. I agree. I thought Isaiah got a bad rap. You seem pretty close with Nate Robinson. How was that? He seemed like he was actually your friend as opposed to just your teammate. How was it to see him leave, especially to a division rival? Well, it was tough. I'm, I mean, I'm very happy for him that now he's got a team. Um, you know, Nate's a guy that brings a tremendous amount of enthusiasm to the game. He's a guy that, like you said, is a friend of mine off the court and not only as a good teammate on the court. And we came in together. And there's a special camaraderie when you come in together uh, with a guy in the same class because we've been through about 30 years of drama is what it seems in a five-year period together. And, and the one thing that's remained to be me and him, you know, staying on the same team. A lot of players have come and gone. So it was sad to see him go. That's nice. Before I let you get out of here and let you enjoy your evening, tell everyone one thing that they do not know about David Lee that they will be shocked to find out. Man, I think today's day and age, almost everything's known from the media. Um, you know what? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. That's a good question. You got anything from this guys? I'm not sure, bro. No. I'm telling you, in today's day and age, especially being in... Yeah, I know. Okay. Like I said, not, not a lot's known sometimes what we do off the court. During the season, you know, I'm about, I'm about the biggest bum, you know. I don't leave the house too much, play video games, uh, order food in, don't go out, don't drink, don't do anything like that. The off season, I try to have a little bit of fun to, to try to get away from the game. But but um, being in New York, it's, it's easy to kind of get sidetracked. It's easy to want to go out and do stuff and, and, uh, and lose focus on, on the job at hand and do my best to, best to try to uh, avoid that and, and, and remain focused during the season. Nice. Well, Dave, per thanks for a few minutes. Personally, as a Knicks fan, I hope to see you back in the orange and blue next year. Thanks for a couple of minutes. Enjoy your evening. Kevin Burke signing off. Take care.